Hey there folks, today I'd like to take a casual peek into my Goody Hall report for the month of October 2014. Now it's been a long while since I last did a uh, Goody Hall report where I share all of the goodies I've been able to find at uh, brick and mortar retailer or specialty shops. Uh, one of the reasons why is because I haven't been going out to find goodies at stores uh, as of late. Uh, another reason why is uh, my, uh, I guess my goody uh, priorities have shifted a little bit. Uh, I have recently got into uh, plastic modeling, uh, such as uh, Gundam kits and uh, other uh, uh, plastic model kits. And uh, my uh, interest in uh, figures has uh, been shifted uh, downward in, on the priority list. Uh, that's another reason why uh, I haven't been able to uh, go out, uh, at least find goodies physic through physical stores because uh, plastic model kits are not easily found uh, at retail anymore. Uh, there are a few shops that do carry them, but uh, um, most of the, the kits I have to really find online. Uh, but uh, just in the last month uh, since our uh, vacation in September, I have been able to find some kits through physical stores. Uh, not locally, I have had to go out, out of the city uh, to find them. But as you can see, in the past month or so, I've been able to acquire quite a few uh, goodies uh, in, in the form of kits and uh, figures. So I, I do have some figures. You can see uh, this uh, wall of goodies here that uh, I'm just going to share with uh, everyone out there uh, what I was able to find in the past month. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and get started. Uh, we'll move our way uh, from left to right, top down here. Let's we'll start off uh, with uh, these sets here. I was uh, able to pick up actually just this past weekend uh, while we were in the uh, Bay Area. These are uh, the Superhero Mashers. They, they've been out for a while. Um, but uh, there's, it looks like uh, some new waves uh, of figures have come out. Now, uh, these two uh, particular uh, Superhero Mashers are, uh, have been out uh, for a while. Uh, these are not the new ones. Uh, and uh, these are actually not mine. These are actually uh, Munchkin number twos. And uh, this is of uh, Venom there and a uh, wolverine and uh, he wanted to have these when we were at at the city target in uh, san francisco and uh, they had a um, coupon uh, it was attached to this uh, wolverine here uh, where you can get uh, five dollars off any two or eight dollars off any three so as you can see we bought uh, set of three and a set of two two here for munchkin number two so he got five dollars off of these two here so but uh yeah these are not really uh newer uh figures these have uh, been out for uh at least the uh, last quarter or so and uh but uh, some of these that i was able to find uh, are newer uh this green goblin here is uh, not new uh this one's been out for a while uh, but uh this one here it's the first I've really seen it of uh, Ghost Rider and uh, out of the newer wave of superhero mashers and it uh, looks like Hasbro missed a bit of an opportunity here um, I'm not sure why uh, this Ghost Rider figure does not come with a bike I've seen some masher sets that include the figure with a bike uh, with Iron Man and uh, I think Captain America uh, but it would have been a perfect opportunity to have Hasbro release a superhero master set of Ghost Rider and a bike. Uh, but it's not. It's in a uh, one of the basic sets there. So it just looks like a missed opportunity by Hasbro there. And also I was able to find a, a Deadpool uh, superhero master set. This is the first time I've ever seen it. And uh, I really have no interest in this guy. <laughs> I'm not a fan of Deadpool. I think he's overrated and a ripoff of another character. But anyways, uh, the first time I've seen a Deadpool and 
the popularity of this guy, uh, which I fail to understand. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be an, a hard to find uh, figure set, but I picked it up anyways. Uh, I may end up reselling it uh, or uh, give it to Munchkin number two because it uh, looks like here this particular set comes with a piece of uh, Venom. So uh, maybe I'll just give that to Munchkin number two since he's got that Venom figure here. So, but some superhero master sets I was able to find at retail. At, this was at a city target. Um, these smaller sets were ten dollars, and the um, bigger set here was fifteen, sixteen dollars. Um, but with the coupon, so I was get, able to get it for a little bit cheaper. And uh, the past couple weeks, uh, I've been uh, seeing posts of people finding uh, these particular sets, and these are the uh, uh, Magic: The Gathering. Uh, figure sets or legacy collection sets uh, by Funko. Uh, I've seen folks uh, posting finds of these uh, on Facebook and that prompted me to start looking out for these because I've been waiting for these uh, figures for quite a long while. Ever since I first saw pictures of it on the internet, I think it was almost a year ago. Uh, but uh, I've been really looking forward to finding these and uh, with uh, people finding them uh, around the country I decided to start looking for them too and uh, it looks like uh, that they're not uh, that hard to find uh, they seem to be uh, located at Targets at Barnes & Noble at Toys R Us I don't think I've seen it at Walmart yet but uh, they're not uh, that uh, hard to find which which is cool uh, they are a bit more expensive uh, the previous Legacy Collection sets uh, from uh, Funko uh, were the Game of Thrones uh, figures and those were about $20 each which is okay but uh, all of these uh, no matter which store I went to uh, uh, were selling them for about uh, $25 so, which is kind of interesting so it bumped up uh, in price uh, but uh, looking at the figures I think they're actually better than the uh, uh, Game of Thrones figures, as far as uh, build quality and sculpt, uh, the uh, build quality of the uh, Game of Thrones figures were a bit questionable, uh, but it, these look to be a lot better. Uh, this one here, of course, is uh, Jace uh, Bellerin, uh, set number one. Pretty cool. The only th issue I have with this uh, particular uh, figure are those eyes. Uh, I don't know what Funko was planning to do either paint blue pu uh, pupils for the eyes or just um, blue uh, what do you call it those effect type eyes but it, it did a pretty poor job on that that's one of my uh, rare complaints about the, these figure sets here is this Jace figure but otherwise it's a pretty neat uh, looking figure there and that's uh, Jace and uh, I was also able to pick up uh, Derek uh, Wildspeaker, and uh, of uh, he was of uh, uh, the color green. I think he shifted to black uh, recently, uh, but this is a nice looking figure. It's a big figure, pretty cool. I found this one at Target, and the uh, Jace uh, figure at uh, Target uh, as well. So uh, pretty neat there. I really like uh, this figure. I don't know if I can get some of the details here. Let me. See if I can get it into focus. Uh, the packaging here is putting a bit of a glare, focusing problem on the set there, but that's a pretty cool looking figure there. Uh, it looks like it'll be a bit restrictive on the articulation, just all that uh, armor detail and stuff. But that's our nice representation of uh, Garrick there. And uh, I was also able to find a Johnny uh, Goldmane. And uh, this one, I'm trying to remember if I found this one at Barnes & Noble or at Toys R Us. Uh, seems that Target has only got a portion of the uh, Magic the Gathering sets, uh, and Ajani is not one of them. It seems like uh, they're only showing up at uh, Toys R Us and uh, Barnes & Noble. It looks like I picked this one up at Toys R Us uh, for about 25 bucks. But uh, Ajani uh, represents the color white. And uh, pretty cool there. Nice sculpting detail there. 
and a uh, really really cool uh, figure and uh, set number four uh, is uh, Nissa and she represents the color green I believe and I, I'm not too familiar with Nissa and uh, this is another one that's not at Target but uh, more at uh, Barnes and Noble and Toys R Us and it uh, looks like I got this one at Barnes and Noble because they usually have that sticker on the back there for 25 bucks uh, but uh, nice uh, sculpting detail on there and uh, very very cool and uh, I was also able to pick up uh, Liliana Vess and she represents the color black in the uh, color pool of Magic the Gathering and uh, this is a really nicely sculpted figure I really like this one on here and uh, it's very very cool and I was able to pick this one up at uh, Target I believe yeah th uh, this is uh, this one uh, Garrick and Jace were the only ones I can able to find at all of the targets I went to so it looks like they have half the uh, wave uh, at Target but uh, and uh, this final one was <laughs> it's I already took it out of the package because uh, it was my favorite uh, uh, figure out of the entire se uh, series here of Chandra Nalar and she represents the color red and uh, but uh, she is already out of the package and uh, I was taking photos of her uh, earlier but uh, she's uh, basically looks like that but uh, here her uh, full set of hair is on fire in figure form so uh, which is kind of cool and uh, very very neat and you can see uh, the this is series one hopefully uh, uh, they'll have other Planeswalkers uh, in, released in the future, I'd, I hope so, because uh, these are really nicely done. They look like they're uh, much better done than the uh, 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 Game of Thrones uh, release, and I hope to see other uh, Planeswalkers, because there's uh, quite a few that I really want uh, to get to see uh, released as plain as walkers. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit of a break because I'm running out of uh, space on my memory card so be right back. Okay yeah uh, we're back. Uh, I have to apologize because there's there are going to be uh, quite a few uh, breaks uh, while we go through this goodie haul because uh, uh, one of the other goodies I was able to get recently uh, was a, a new camera or oh, actually it's not a new camera but uh, another camera. I, I don't know if you uh, anyone uh, keeps track but I had recently gotten a uh, a new camera basically for free uh, through uh, where I had worked and for uh, 25 years of service uh, it was a uh, Nikon uh, camera uh, I was hoping that it would be a nice upgrade to my uh, previous camera which was a Canon S5 uh, which I really really loved uh, but I just wasn't happy with the Nikon camera that I, that I got from uh, my work. Uh, so I ended up getting another uh, camera to replace that Nikon camera. And uh, I really liked the S5, but it didn't have uh, HD capability. So I was trying to find a similar camera to the S5 that I loved. Uh, and uh, the next best thing I could find was a... Uh, SX1IS, uh, which I was able to pick up at uh, through eBay. Uh, this is uh, not a new camera, actually, uh, and uh, is I think it was released in 2008, 2009. Uh, but uh, it was the next upgrade uh, from the S5, and it looks like uh, Canon has not since uh, released a camera in this particular series that I actually am fond of. So, uh, but uh, uh, this uh, particular camera shoots in HD, so which is good, and it also has some nice uh, features uh, which I loved uh, from the series. But anyways, uh, I digress. Uh, but uh, I'm shooting uh, on uh, this camera, which uh, shooting in HD does not uh, shoot for very long on the memory card that I used on my previous cameras. So I have to buy a, a larger size memory card. Uh, but in the meantime, it's uh, I can only shoot at 12 minutes at a time. So, but anyways, uh, continuing on uh, with uh, our goodie haul here. Uh, start over here. It looks like uh, the uh, latest uh, release from Magic: The Gathering has come out. Uh, the new block. Uh, the this one is Cons of Tarkir. 
uh, the first in uh, I don't know how many uh, sets in this particular block uh, I have to find out more research I actually took a break from magic uh, a couple months ago uh, right around the uh, release of uh, the 2015 core set so I haven't been following any news but it uh, looks like a, a new release uh, of the block uh, cons of Tarkir and it looks like uh, based on the photos here, looks like uh, they're using a, I would say, a, not a Mongol type theme or a, a mix of Mongol and uh, and uh, probably uh, Arabian type themes uh, and magic, of course. Um, but uh, and uh, that's a, a th I guess, a theme that is not featured a lot in fantasy uh, gaming. And uh, it's actually a theme that I'm quite fond of. Uh, I used to, uh, uh, back in the day, uh, in uh, basic D and D, uh, there was a uh, there was a country that uh, that uh, the folks at D and D had uh, focused on, uh, called the Gazetteer, uh, and the Ethengar Khanates. Uh, it was a nice. Uh, Nice a uh, backdrop to, uh, and uh, it was a unique backdrop. It's uh, highly un uh, underutilized uh, nowadays. But to have a Mongol type theme or a uh, an Arabian type theme uh, in, uh, in a fantasy gaming is actually uh, pretty cool. But uh, that's some uh, nice picture there. And uh, I was able to pick up this fat pack. I'm a fan of fat packs. Uh, at uh, Target and for about $40 uh, dollars, I believe so so that's that and uh, here uh, starting off uh, it looks like uh, we have a whole bunch of kits and uh, Gunpla and uh, Plamo related stuff that I was able to find uh, now there like I said earlier it's not easy to find these kits uh, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and go through these. I was able to pick this one up here at a comic shop in uh, the Roseville area, uh, Roseville, California area. It was very out of the way. It's like on the other side of uh, the city for me, um, where I live. And uh, this uh, particular shop had uh, a small selection of uh, Gunpla. And uh, I was able to pick up this. This is the Rosen Zulu Episode 7 version uh, from Gundam Unicorn, uh, part of the Universal Century. And I was able to pick this kit up for uh, 36 bucks. And uh, this is the correct color version. They released the Rosen Zulu previously, um, but it, the colors were just god awful. Uh, they were not accurate at all. Uh, and I did not want to pick up that set. Uh, uh, I wanted uh, to pick up this uh, particular version of the Rosen Zulu because this one is more color accurate. Now this is a different version of the uh, previous uh, Rosen Zulu uh, in that uh, it is the episode seven. Uh, if you're familiar, or if you're not familiar with uh, Gundam Unicorn, it's an OVA which had uh, seven movie-like uh, episodes, you could say, uh, that was released over the course of. Uh, almost seven years <laughs> uh, so but uh, this uh, particular kit is uh, a, li a little bit different but uh, allows you to build a configuration that was in the previous release so uh, if you did not have the uh, or did not have the previous version you have no reason to get it now uh, because you have this uh, kit which can take care of uh, both uh, this uh, particular configuration and the previous one so pretty cool and I'm glad that I picked that one up. And uh, this one here is a an older kit. Uh, this is from the uh, Seed, I believe, Gundam Seed Astray. Uh, I don't know if that's a uh, based off a of manga or an OVA or not. Uh, but uh, this one is Gundam Astray Gold Frame uh, Amatsumina uh, customized suit. And I was able to pick this one up at a um, Hobby Town uh, USA when I was in uh, Roseville and uh, this one looks uh, pretty cool it's not as cool as the 1 100 scale this is the 1 1 44th scale uh, the gold on this one is not uh, plated it's uh, it's 
just a solid gold, a dull colored type of plastic, uh, which is unfortunate, but still it's a nice looking suit. Uh, I really like it, it had the cool, uh, this cool suit. Uh, I hope uh, to find the 1 100th no grade uh, of this kit in the, in the, f of this suit, I'm sorry, in the future, because I've seen uh, some pictures of that and that has some gold plated plastic and uh, looks really nice but uh, this one is uh, okay and uh, I was able to pick this one up I think it was like 20 bucks yeah $22 at Hobby Town USA uh, these here are a couple of Gundam Age kits uh, I was able to purchase these from that same comic shop that I picked up the Rose and Zulu and uh, this is of uh, Gundam Age 1 Normal now, I think uh, Gundam Age is one of those um, Gundam series that didn't do well, but I think is uh, actually pretty good. Uh, I started watching it, and it basically follows three generations uh, of uh, uh, characters, uh, which is uh, really, really cool. And uh, I think it only lasted uh, about 50 episodes, uh, one season's worth of episodes, so... But I think uh, it gets a bad rap because I, I don't think uh, the kits sold well. I don't think uh, a lot of folks like the series that much. I don't know if it was their first impressions of uh, it being more like, yeah, I guess like a kiddified version of Gundam. Uh, I could see why uh, first impressions, but uh, I've been watching the series and I actually think it's pretty good. And it's actually more adult themed than it uh, appears to be because the animation style is a little bit uh, for a younger type audience. The style of animation it looks like uh, one of those Pokemon type of uh, animation styles, but it's actually not that bad. And the series is actually pretty good. And I decided to go ahead and pick up a few kits uh, from uh, the series. I start out, of course, uh, with Gundam Age 1 Normal. Uh, which is in the first arc of the uh, uh, three generations of the, uh, the storyline. And uh, this particular kit uh, is relatively inexpensive, 16 bucks, so it's not too bad. And I was also able to pick up a uh, kit of the ZSR uh, suit. And uh, this is, uh, of course, one of the antagonists. Uh, and another reason I think a lot of folks kind of disliked it uh, be Due to first impressions, is it looks like a, uh, the uh, the antagonists in the series are what are considered aliens. Uh, they're called unknown uh, enemies uh, or UEs, and uh, the characters in in the show do not know who uh, these uh, uh, suits, uh, who are the people are in the suits. So they're just guessing that they're aliens, and I guess that's a, a bit of a turnoff for some folks of uh, Gundam, but. Uh, you don't. Nobody knows who they are, so it may or may not be aliens. But uh, I, I haven't gotten that far yet. But the general consensus, uh, at least uh, in the storyline, is that uh, they are aliens. Uh, and the another reason why they think they're aliens because the suits are more animalistic in design as opposed to humanoid in design. So that's a reason why the folk in the show think they might be uh, aliens. Uh, but uh, we'll have to see uh, when I uh, watch it. Uh, I have an inkling that they aren't, uh, but uh, that's uh, just me. But anyways, uh, we have uh, actually these kits here that uh, are not uh, imported uh, or gun true gunplug or plamo, uh, but they are based off an import. Uh, but these are sprue kits. Uh, these are designed to be uh, sold here in the states, or not in the states, but in the western states or western region. Uh, and uh, they are uh, based off a uh, Japanese property. And uh, the sprue kits, uh, I th think I released a video on sprue kits uh, previously, but uh, uh, these are... Uh, des Again, apologies for the uh, memory card uh, fill up there. Anyways, uh, these are sprue kits, uh, and uh, they are uh, kits, plastic model kits, that are actually uh, designed and made in Japan, but are uh, released 
to uh, their Western audience. And uh, the Sprue Kids uh, have various, uh, I guess, uh, themes. They have a Batman, or DC, I should say, uh, theme. They have the Halo theme. And uh, I was able to find these uh, particular kits based off of LBX, which is actually a uh, Japanese uh, anime and model kit line. Uh, and uh, actually has been uh, around uh, in Japan for several years now and uh, and just recently been released in anime form in uh, the US here uh, and they, they call it uh, LBX here in uh, over here but in Japan it's called Donball Senki and uh, like I said it's been around for quite a while but uh, it's just uh, being released in uh, the US at least uh, as of just in the last couple months, I would say. But uh, this uh, particular sprue kit is uh, based off of the Achilles. Uh, it's pronounced Achilles in uh, Japan, I believe. Um, but uh, Achilles, and uh, this particular kit is a level 2 kit, uh, which is, I think, a, just a direct re-release of the original kit in Japan. Uh, the kits are a one-to-one -one scale. Or they're actually little figures that stand about four or five inches tall. And uh, they are one-to-one -one scales uh, because in the anime they are little robots that uh, uh, the characters battle with. So pretty neat. And this one, of course, is of Achilles. Or Achilles. Uh, this one here is of Hunter. And uh, pretty cool. And... Uh, Actually, um, Munchkin number two actually claimed this one already, and he already started working on it and opened it up there. But I just wanted to show off uh, what we were able to pick up. So this one actually belongs to Munchkin number two. So, and uh, we have Deku here, uh, which is one of the, I guess, uh, grunts uh, in the series, in the anime. And uh, we have Emperor, uh, which is uh, controlled by one of the uh, antagonists on the show. So... Uh, these kits sell for about 20 bucks. Uh, I've been able to find sprue kits at uh, Target and Toys R Us, but uh, the ones for LBX uh, I've uh, only found at uh, Toys R Us so far, and they were about $20 a piece. And it's pretty cool. Uh, I would say the equivalent of this is a high grade uh, in gunpla terms. But uh, nice uh, actual uh, property uh, and an anime I've actually been started watching, uh, the Japanese uh, anime. Uh, some other uh, neat stuff here. Uh, I was able to pick up some Assault Kingdom uh, figures. Uh, this one in, from San Francisco. Uh, I can't remember which shop. I think it might have been Japantown uh, Collectibles. Uh, this one is of Sasabi. Um, pretty cool. This is one of the larger sets. Uh, one of the standard sets is this size here. Uh, this one is of uh, a Zakatu suit uh, that I was able to pick up at Barnes & Noble. Now these uh, particular uh, sets are uh, what are called uh, like Gashapon uh, in Japan. Uh, they're candy type toys. Uh, they're little figures or little whatever uh, that includes a piece of candy in them and uh, a lot of times uh, it's randomized but they, for this particular assault kingdom uh, you you know what you're getting on uh, uh, whatever uh, particular kit uh, and uh, since this is distributed through bluefin I believe they took the candy out of uh, yeah, this one uh, it's got that bluefin sticker so the, the, this one does not include candy in them uh, but uh, I was able to pick this one up at Barnes & Noble for 10 bucks of a Zaku 2, one of my more favorite suits. But uh, I was able to pick up this one at Japantown Collectibles, I believe. And I think I paid... there was a sticker on here. I thought I saw it. Where is it? Uh, I think it was like $18. Yeah, there it is. Uh, let's see. Get it into focus. Yeah, $18.99. And uh, this one doesn't look like it was distributed through uh, Bluefin because I don't see the uh, um, sticker. And Bluefin is the U.S. distributor of uh, imported uh, Bandai products or Japanese products. And since there's no um, 
bluefin sticker. This probably has the candy in it. And uh, I was able to pick up this one here, um, one of my favorite uh, teams in the Gundam universe, and that's the uh, Black Tri-Stars. Now this is a special set like the Sasabi. It's not your typical size. You can see it's a lot bigger. And this one actually contains three figures of the uh, Zaku 2 high mobility figure uh, suits. Uh, and uh, they are uh, numbered uh, for the individual uh, TriStar members, which is kind of cool. And I'm trying to remember how much uh, this one costs. I think this one costs about $28 or $30. I had already opened this one up because I was really excited to, to uh, get it. But you can see it comes with uh, basically three suits. Uh, and uh, it looks like a display base to uh, display them on. So pretty neat. Uh, some other uh, Assault Kingdom uh, figures I was able to pick up. Uh, a Jagan here. And uh, that was, I think, Barnes & Noble. Yeah, you can see the Barnes & Noble sticker there. And another Zaku 2. This is actually my fourth. I had picked up two previous Zaku 2s at Barnes & Nobles, and I was able to find two more, uh, which is uh, really, really cool. So, hey, yeah, I'm army building these guys. And uh, some other things I was able to pick up. I was went to uh, Kinokuniya in San Francisco. I was able to pick up a few of these Gundam Perfect Files. Uh, really cool. These uh, are sort of magazines. They're not really magazines, but they're basically reference materials for all things Gundam anime related. And uh, which is uh, really, really cool. And they're not just your typical reference uh, books. They're broken down into sections. And uh, they're meant to be pulled out and put into a binder uh, by sections, uh, which is really cool. Now, it covers all aspects of the Gundam anime universe, uh, like OVAs, uh, the Universal Century, and all of the uh, uh, other uh, media through, uh, through anime. And uh, it's just really, really cool. And I have one that I already had opened uh, previously. Uh, this one's issue number three. I don't know how long they've been producing these. But just to go through it. Now, it's all in Japanese. I have no idea what most of it says. But I just like going through it and looking through it. And they have profiles on characters, suits, and just lore of the Gundam universe. It's actually uh, quite cool. You can see the Kshatriya. Here, uh, focus on the Kshatriya, and you can see it's got a three-hole punch. It's meant to be torn out and placed in a binder by section. Uh, you can see it uh, right there. You get some neat, uh, and it's not. It doesn't just focus on one particular uh, OVA or universe or um, series. Uh, you can see uh, they are a mix. Uh, this one, of course, is Gundam Unicorn. Uh, this is uh, Marita Cruz, uh, the pilot of the Kshatriya. And you can see here Lock on Stratos. So you, so you can see it uh, di covers different Gundam animes. Uh, and there's another unicorn there of character. So it's just really, really cool. I just like uh, going through these, even though I can't read it because uh, it's on Japanese. But uh, I just want to collect it to have to flip through and look at uh, all of the neat stuff related to Gundam. And I'm going to have to try tracking them down. I think they're in issue 100 something right now. So, and it's been going on for a while. So you have to track down all of these uh, older ones. It's going to be a bit of an adventure for me. So pretty cool. Neat uh, reference uh, material. You can see the red comet there. And uh, I was able to pick up issue uh, 3, 35, 32, 30, 28, 23, and uh, 12. Now these particular issues I picked up because uh, I found out on Hobby Link Japan that uh, they carry a lot of the Gundam Perfect files. Uh, which is really cool and re for really cheap, for only like 5 bucks. Uh, and uh, I was able to buy these for ten dollars at uh, Kino Kaniya. but uh, for five bucks at uh, Hobby Link Japan but I picked up these particular ones because uh, these particular ones are sold out in Hobby Link Japan so that's why I picked up uh, these particular issue numbers on here so 
and I plan to just go to Hobby Link Japan and pick up the other ones for a really uh, inexpensive price. So pretty cool there. Uh, another kit I was able to pick up in one of the shops in Japan Town. I can't remember the name, uh, but uh, this is a Gundam Seed uh, kit of a mobile uh, kagu on there, uh, shown early on in the uh, Gundam Seed uh, anime, uh, one I've been watching uh, recently. And uh, this is uh, is this the remastered? No, I don't think this is the remastered one. This is just the standard one. I don't see the remastered numbering on here. But this is uh, an older kit. Uh, well, not that old. Uh, this one was released in 2012. So, but I think uh, this particular set is. Oh, it is a remastered. Sorry, uh, number seven R's for remaster there. My apologies. And uh, but uh, it's a different color theme than the original release of the Mobile Kagu. Uh, I think this color is supposed to represent the anime in closer detail. Uh, which is uh, pretty neat, but uh, I like uh, these suits now in uh, Gundam Seed uh, There are no Zaku's in a sense, but uh, this is as close to Zaku in Gundam Seed. Now in Gundam Seed Destiny I believe there are Zaku's, but in Gundam Seed there are no Zaku's, but you can see the mono eye guy there So that's as close to Zaku as you can get. So that's kind of neat. I got that one for 24 four dollars uh, a little overpriced uh, but couldn't find it uh, anywhere else uh, now this particular kit here uh, we'll get to as soon as I uh, free up the memory card sorry about that okay we're back uh, this particular kit I was able to find uh, at uh, cards in comic central uh, in San Francisco off of Gary Street and uh, this is a kit or uh, at least a franchise I'm not uh, familiar with. Uh, this is uh, based off of Super, Super Robot Wars, which, uh, as far as I know, is a, a, a basically a giant robot fighting game. Uh, and uh, that's, uh, that's all about as much as I know. I think there was a, a manga and anime uh, based off of it. And some of the earlier releases of the Super Robot Wars games even had a mix of... Uh, franchises uh, from different giant robot uh, franchises such as Gundam or I don't know if Evangelion or uh, uh, other giant robot properties uh, like Armored Core and all that kind of stuff and you basically fight uh, and uh, each other in that and uh, I believe uh, Super Robot Wars also created their own properties uh, at least robotic uh, properties and fighters and I think these kits by Kotobukiya represent uh, the uh, uh, original designs uh, in the game or anime and uh, I saw these kits uh, at uh, Cards and Comics Central uh, sitting on the shelf and I thought they looked uh, really cool. Now I've uh, read uh, that uh, Kotobukiya kits can be a bit finicky uh, that I, uh, the build uh, and the quality and the sculpt is really excellent but I think uh, uh, the I don't know if it's the material used or the design or what uh, it can be a little bit particular with uh, Kotobukiya's, uh, but uh, uh, I'm uh, willing to to go through uh, the, this kit uh, just because it looks uh, really really cool. And uh, we have one here of uh, El Dabath. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, and that guy looks really really neat. And this one says it's 1 uh, to 1 44th scale, but looking at the size of this kit, it's about, it's bigger than the older Master Grades uh, Gundam kits. So I think these guys in the 1 44th scale are much bigger than uh, Gundam suits. So uh, pretty cool. You can just see some of the pictures of this guy here, and he looks like a melee fighter. And uh, just really, really cool. And uh, this kit uh, cost $55.98, uh, which is a bit expensive. And I think it's because of all of that detail included in this kit. And uh, I'm looking on the interwebs at other kits I've been trying to find. It's kind of hard to find these kits. Uh, this is, looks like it's number 44 in the series. 
but they seem to be uh, relatively uh, expensive. Uh, I don't know uh, when this kit was released, uh, but uh, looking at the condition of the box, I think it might have been released uh, earlier. Um, probably in their 2000s or something, I'm not sure. And here's another kit I was able to find uh, at Cards and Comics Central, another Super Robot Wars. This one of, of Granzon. And uh, this one is actually non-scale, so it's kind of hard to find out through pictures on the interweb. So I, I've been trying to find out. I think this is a giant size uh, type of figure. And to put this guy in 144th scale would be make it really even bigger. <laughs> I'm just guessing I, based on pictures I've seen. I don't know. Uh, but you can see that this kit for a non-scale is even bigger than uh, the 144th scale of the Super Robot Wars. So uh, how big this guy in 144th scale, I don't know what he would be. He'd probably be really big. Uh, but uh, this one's a non-scale version. This guy looked pretty cool, so I picked him up as well. There were a few of the Super Robot War kits uh, at that shop, but I, I decided to just go ahead and pick up these two to start. And yeah, you can see this one's not uh, that cheap. This one is $70, so, uh, which is the going price after going uh, looking on the interwebs. Uh, I've seen uh, this go for, so. But he just looks uh, badass. On there, and just uh, some of the pictures. Uh, these are other kits in the uh, line. And uh, looking at uh, that, it's just he looks cool. And I look forward to building this guy. So, not too many uh, videos on Super Robot War kits uh, I've been able to find on YouTube. Kind of hard. But, uh, or not as plentiful, I should say, as like Gundam kits. But, uh, really, uh, two kits I'm looking forward to building. Now, uh, looks like, uh, these, uh, particular kits I was able to find at, uh, Ying Hobbies and Toys in Chinatown, uh, San Francisco. And, uh, uh I like going to that, uh, shop because that's, uh, one one of the few uh, shops dedicated to Gundam, but and just uh, or even plastic models that I can find, and it's just really cool to go through there and just spend hours just going and uh, looking through there, and it's just really cool. And uh, the shopkeeper there is actually pretty friendly, and it's uh, also they seem to have some sort of permanent sale, uh, uh, twenty five percent off of basically uh, all Gundam kits and model kits there uh, which is really cool it's marked up a little bit so even uh, with the discount it's still pretty cheap so or at least uh, relatively inexpensive uh, compared to other places I've uh, gone to and uh, uh, these I was able to pick up at that uh, particular shop and uh, just going through them uh, I was able to pick up this one this is a uh, one of the very old uh, Gundam Sandrock uh, from the Gundam Wing 144th uh, line and uh, this one is uh, I picked up because I just want to complete uh, my lineup of these particular Gundam Wing figures and uh, this particular one has also a mini figure of uh, there of Katra uh, but uh, this one was uh, pretty cheap I think it was less than yeah it was less than ten dollars after the uh, 25% off discount you can see there and I was able to pick up a few of the Build Fighters uh, series which I, I really uh, enjoyed watching uh, and uh, with Munchkin number two this one here is the skull weapon uh, accessory kit uh, this was was this used by Gundam X Mel? I'm not sure uh, but can uh, I think is included with the Gundam X Mel kit, uh, but you can this particular kit uh, You can outfit it with other uh, Model kits. Yeah, you, know, you want to customize so that's uh, kind of cool and uh, this was uh, What's the price on here these price tags on here are before the discount so $16 so it's like $4 off of that and uh, I was able to find a Hyper Gunpla Battle Weapon Set. Basically an accessory kit of all these different kinds of weapons. Pretty neat. 
And it was only $12.99, so that's less than $10. Uh, the uh, Matsuri weapons are uh, basically weapons that can go well with the Sangaku Astray because they look uh, like they fit well with that particular suit. But of course, you don't need to outfit it with uh, the Sangaku Astray. Uh, but uh, pretty neat. And this was uh, $12.99 or less than $12.99. Uh, this one uh, I picked up uh, for Munchkin number two. I already have this one on order. Uh, this is a sumo from the uh, Turn A Gundam series, uh, but was featured in the, in Build Fighters. Uh, that's where I first saw it, uh, the suit, and uh, I, was, I thought that was pretty cool. I mean, it wasn't a fe it wasn't a major character, but uh, one of the characters from the academy had uh, a sumo. And I thought it was pretty cool. And uh, I had already ordered one, but we saw this one at Ying Hobbies and Toys. So, And the Munchkin number two wanted one, so he got that here. And uh, this, you can see, was really, really cheap. Uh, less than $10 uh, after the discount, but only $7.50. And this is the 144th scale, so that's kind of cool. I was able to find a few of the LBX kits. Uh, from Japan, uh, not just the sprue kits, uh, but they're based off of the same series. Uh, these are the Japanese uh, release of LBX, so that's kind of cool. Uh, I believe this is from the later part of the series, uh, more recent. So I think this kit here was released in 2013. And uh, this one here is of uh, De SLD. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correct, uh, but a cool looking uh, character there. Doesn't look like he'll stand on its own. It looks like he's going to require a stand because of those, the feet there. <laughs> so, But uh, this kit uh, was uh, 32 bucks before the discount, so that's $8 off there. So, about uh, in the mid 20s. So, which is a. Uh, Pretty decent uh, for an imported uh, kit there, so. But uh, here's another one of uh, Odin M, an upgraded form of Odin. And uh, Odin is uh, one of the, the characters in the later uh, part of the series, or mid part, I'm not sure, uh, of the series. There were uh, basically three seasons of Donbal Senki uh, released uh, in Japan, so I don't know how much of that they're going to release in the U.S., but it looks like they just started with the first one. But uh, that's the Odin M. I was able to find uh, this. This is the Serpent Custom from Endless Waltz, 144th line. And uh, this was not $17.99. Uh, this has got a green sticker here. This was on uh, a discount uh, for only uh, $10. Uh, I already have one of these. It's just uh, uh, these are uh, grunts uh, from the bad guys. Uh, but uh, Crucianata, uh, but um, uh, so I decided to get him real cheap uh, to army build him. So that's kind of cool. Another ten dollar kit I was able to pick up uh, the Zaku Warrior from Seed Destiny. Uh, this one has that green sticker as well, so that makes this one ten dollars. So uh, pretty cool. This is a high grade kit, and I'll be right back. I'm running out of memory again. Okay, sorry about that. This should be the last break before the end of the video, but uh, continuing on, uh, we have here a, a, a Goof Ignited uh, set from Sea Destiny. This is a kit for Munchkin number two. This is one he's been actually looking for uh, ever since uh, he's been going through uh, my catalog uh, here. My He's been going through, uh, just looking at, uh, going through my catalog of Gundam. Uh, here and uh, he actually saw the goof ignited in here and uh, He's been wanting to, to get that kit for a while and we actually found one here at Ying uh, Hobbies and Toys So we uh, went ahead and picked this one up now, This one here was uh, $30 of course uh, with the 25% uh, off. That's about $7 off so not too bad uh, in the low 20s there for a Goof Ignited, uh, the 144th, uh, 144th uh, scale uh, Gundam Seed uh, Destiny. So pretty cool for Munchkin number two. And uh, 
I was able to find this at the shop too. Uh, this is the uh, Master Gundam uh, Master Grade. Uh, and uh, one of the earlier uh, Master Grades. Uh, this one is released uh, in 2002. Uh, I got it because uh, it came with a Master Asia figure. Uh, I like the 120th scale figures and uh, I like to uh, paint them. And that's actually uh, pretty neat that it came included with it. Uh, also, another reason why I got it is because the, the upcoming uh, Master Asia figure in figure arts form is going to be coming out at the beginning of the year. So uh, that's another reason why I got this kit. And also, I got this kit because uh, he showed up as uh, one of the uh, suits or one of the gunpla uh, featured in, at the very end of the first season of uh, Build Fighters. Uh, Mao's uh, Sifu. Uh, actually uh, uses a, a Master Gundam, uh, which is uh, really cool. And it uh, prompted me to uh, want to pick it up. And it wasn't too bad. Uh, this was uh, 56 bucks before the uh, discount. So that made it about 40 some odd dollars. So it's not too bad uh, for this uh, kit. They also had the 1 100th no grade uh, Master Gundam uh, kit. But... Uh, I uh, preferred uh, this kit because it includes that one uh, figure there uh, that I get to paint. So uh, pretty neat there. And this is a fighting, what is it? Fighting action. So uh, this particular uh, kit has a complete inner frame, which is cool because a lot of the earlier Master Grades uh, didn't have a complete inner frame, but this one does. And you can see it's uh, designed for uh, uh, posability because this is a melee type of uh, uh, Gundam. So uh, for posability for all of these fighting stances and stuff is kind of uh, why this was designed as it is. So pretty cool. You can see the, some of the cool uh, poses that uh, this uh, particular kit can pull off. So pretty neat. I'm glad to have found that one there, and I'm glad to have found uh, this one here. Again, I'm not familiar with Turn A Gundam, I'm only familiar with the suit that was used in Build Fighters. And this is the 1 100th scale of the uh, Sumo. And uh, what's really cool about this kit, I did not, I wasn't aware of it, but uh, where's my Munchkin number 2's kit? This is the... Uh, Mobile Sumo, uh, the smaller scale kit. Let me open this one up. And uh, you can see uh, the, the plastic is it is that dull plastic there on the uh, one forty fourth scale kit, which is it's it's okay, uh, but it's it's just dull plastic there, so it's not that bad. Actually, is actually quite nice actually, uh, but. Uh, I did not know until I saw this kit in the shop that this 1 100th scale kit is not, doesn't use that same dull uh, gold plastic. It actually has plated plastic on here. Well, this is not it, but open that up. You can see. Uh, really cool, but uh, the unfortunate thing is it's not undergated. So uh, taking it off the sprues, it's, you can see. I don't know if you can see it there. It doesn't go underneath the uh, part, so you're going to have to cut that uh, and shave it uh, at the edge. So. And that's because this is an older kit, so uh, before they started doing undergating, I believe, so which is unfortunate. But it's just damn cool <laughs> just just to have that in that nice shiny gold on there and that's how I couldn't really pass that up and I really had to pick that up and uh, this one was 46 before the discount so not too bad on uh, that and uh, finally I was able to pick up another uh, master grade kit and that's of the uh, dual Gundam assault shroud uh, from Gundam seed uh, the story has been okay, uh, but I really like the suit designs uh, on uh, Gundam Seed and uh, the uh, dual Gundam uh, 
is one of my more favorite uh, suits. Uh, it used to be the Buster Gundam, but I really like the Dual Gundam, and uh, and it's just uh, and the kits is just really cool because you have the basic uh, body mold, but then you have the armored up mode that um, Isaac uh, outfits uh, uh, midway through the series, uh, which is uh, pretty cool on there, and he looks even better armored up, I think. But it allows you to do that. It allows you to have uh, dual modes. No, dual in a different uh, spelling. But uh, allows you to have dual modes on that, and which is really cool. So uh, I don't know if I'm wanting to get a second one of these to have uh, one in each uh, mode there, uh, which is uh, really really cool. Now this kit cost eighty bucks, uh, but again that's before the discount, so. Uh, divide that by four. That's twenty dollars off. So about fifty nine, which is the going rate for uh, a kit. Uh, this particular kit, at least uh, what I've been able to find so far. But uh, I'm really uh, glad to have found uh, the dual Gundam. But uh, this is my casual peek into all of the neat goodies I was able to find at retail and specialty shops. Uh, excuse the mess there. Uh, Hopefully, uh, I won't have to break up these videos because I'll get a bigger memory card uh, pretty soon uh, just to be able to shoot nonstop. But uh, yeah, I apologize for all the breakup in the, in the video there. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you guys uh, next time.